This is section 5.5 .5 on fractions, decimals, and order of operations. Now first we're going to talk about writing fractions as decimals. And to write a fraction as a decimal, we simply have to divide the numerator by the denominator. Here's an example. If we want to write 3 fourths as a decimal, we just divide the 3 by the 4, and that would give us 75 hundredths. Another example, 2 fifths. If we wrote that as a decimal, we would divide the 2 by the 5, and we would get 40 hundredths. Let's do some of our own examples. If we want to write 1 third as a decimal, we're going to divide the 1 by the 3. So now, since we have two whole numbers, we're going to have to put in a decimal point and some zeros so that we can take this out past the decimal point. So let's write a few zeros in there and we'll see how far we want to, how many decimal point places we want to take this out to. So 3 goes into 10 three times. Then 3 times 3 is 9. If we subtract, and borrow there, then we get 100. Then we're looking at the 3 and the 10 again. 3 goes into 10 three times. If we multiply that back out, we get 9. Now if we subtract, we get 10. And 3 goes into 10 three times. And you can kind of see the pattern that we have here. If we kept taking this out, we would just keep getting more and more 3s so we have a repeating decimal. And the way that we write this is just with a bar over the part that repeats. So there's the way that we would write it. So our answer is 3 tenths with a repeating 3. Now, if we're writing negative 1 and 7 eighths as a decimal, we already have our whole number part is the negative 1. So we don't need to do anything to change that. So part of our answer will be negative 1. What we need to do is take the 7 eighths and figure out what is the decimal equivalent for that. So we're going to write 7 eighths as a decimal. That means that we're dividing 7 by 8. And again, since 8 is bigger than 7, we want some values after the decimal point, so we're going to have to add a decimal point and some zeros here. So now if we're comparing 8 to 70, 8 goes into 70 8 times, then 8 times 8 is 64. And if we subtract, we get 600, then 8 goes into 67 times, and then 8 times 7 is 56. So if we subtract there, we get 40. Then 8 goes into 40 five times. And if we subtract there, we get a remainder of 0. And that means that we're done. So the fractional part of our number, written in decimal form, is 875 thousandths. And that means that negative 1 and 7 eighths in decimal form is negative 1 and 875 thousandths. Now if we want to compare fractions and decimals, that's hard to do unless we write the fraction as an equivalent decimal. For example, if we wanted to compare 125 thousandths and 1 fourth, 
we would need to write the one-fourth in decimal form. If we did that, if we divided the one by the four, we would get 25 hundredths. Now we can compare the 25 hundredths and the 125 thousandths. Notice that the two is bigger than the one in that first digit, so that means the 25 hundredths is greater than the 125 thousandths. So 125 thousandths is less than 25 hundredths. Here's an example. We're going to write these three numbers in order from smallest to largest. Now to do that, we're going to have to convert our 15 sevenths to a decimal form so that we can compare it to the other two. So we're going to divide the 15 by the 7. Seven goes into 15 twice. And if we multiply that back out, we get 14. If we subtract, we get one. Now to compare it to these two, we're gonna have to take this out to at least the hundredths place, and maybe even to the thousandths place or farther than that. So we're gonna carry this out a couple more places. So now we're Looking at how many times 7 goes into 10, well, it goes in there once. Then if we subtract there, we get 3. So now to take it out to another place, we're putting a 0 there, so 7 goes into 30 four times. If we multiply that out, we get 28, and if we subtract, we get 2. Now we add a 0 to take it out to another place. and seven goes into 20 twice. And two times seven is 14. So that gives us six when we subtract. And we're gonna have to take it out one more place so that we can compare it to the two and 142 thousandths. So seven goes into 68 times. If we multiply that out, we get 56. And I'm running out of room, so I'm going to write it up here. 60 minus 56 is 4. Okay, well now we at least we've got enough places that we can tell which one of those two numbers is the larger one. So now we want to compare the 2 and 142 thousandths with the decimal equivalent we got for our 15 sevenths. Well, all the digits are the same until we get to the eight. Remember, we can write a zero there. Eight's bigger than zero, so that means that that's the greater of the two numbers. So we have the two and 142 thousandths, and then our equivalent of 15 sevenths. And then if we compare this one with the two and 15 hundredths, the two and 15 hundredths is going to be larger. So that's the order that these are going to go in from smallest to largest. So the first one is the two and 142 thousandths, then the 15 sevenths, and then the two and 15 hundredths. Let's review order of operations. Remember the first step is to look for parentheses, brackets, absolute value signs or fraction bars and simplify within those first. Then we evaluate any expressions with exponents. And then we multiply or divide in order from left to right. And the last step is to add or subtract in order from left to right. Let's look at an example. If we have this problem, first we would see that we do have parentheses. So we have to simplify inside those first. That just means we're going to add the two and two tenths and the three and one tenth. If we do that, we get five and three tenths. Now if we're looking at this, the next operation we would do would be the exponent. Now to square negative two and three tenths, it means we're actually multiplying 
it times itself. And since we have two negatives there, our answer will be a positive. And if we multiply 2 and 3 tenths times 2 and 3 tenths, we would get 5 and 29 hundredths. So that ends up being positive 5 and 29 hundredths. Now our next operation we would do would be the multiplication. So we'd multiply the 4 and 1 tenth times the 5 and 3 tenths. That gives us 21 and 73 hundredths. And finally we could do our addition and if we add those two we end up with 27 and 2 hundredths. Let's do some examples of our own. In this one the first operation we would need to do is the exponent. So again we're multiplying 3 tenths times itself. And there really all we have to do is multiply 3 times 3 which gives us 9. And then we just have to count our decimal places. We have one decimal place in each of these. And remember we add up how many decimal places there are. So 1 plus 1 is 2. That tells us we have to have two decimal places in our answer. So we're moving our decimal point 2 back from where it started and that gives us 9 hundredths. Now we have 4 tenths minus 9 hundredths. So our next and actually our last operation is to do that subtraction. And remember when we're doing addition or subtraction with decimals we have to make sure and line up our decimal point and our place values. And I added a zero to the four tenths so that we can borrow. So if we do that we end up with 31 hundredths. Now one more example. In this one, since we do have a fraction bar, we are going to have to simplify. And the only place we're going to have to simplify here is the numerator since the denominator already only has one value there. And in the numerator, the first operation that we would do is the multiplication. So the first thing we have to do is take the 42 hundredths times the 2. If we multiply this, we get a 4, an 8, and then counting our decimal places, we have 2 in the 42 hundredths, and we have 0 in the 2, so that means we're going to have two decimal places. That's going to make our answer there 84 hundredths. So now we're still simplifying in our numerator. Now we have to do the addition. We're adding 4 and 84 hundredths. And notice how I'm lining up the decimal point there. And that just gives us 4 and 84 hundredths. Now that we've got our numerator all simplified, now we can actually do the division. So we're going to divide the 4 and 84 hundredths by negative 2. And since we have one positive and one negative, we know that our quotient will be a negative number. So let's do our division. 2 goes into 4 twice multiply that back out we get 4, then if we subtract we get an 84 there, then 2 goes into 8 4 times, if we multiply back out we get 80, if we subtract we get 4, and 2 goes in there twice. Then we have a remainder of 0, so we're all done, 
We just have to remember to put our decimal point in the correct place. And now we have a negative 2 and 42 hundredths for our answer.